Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question that was raised by uh, Tony Partain. Uh, he is K7PTC. Now, this is an interesting question. Uh, some time ago, I think a couple years ago, I put together a video showing the modeling of a dipole at various heights and showing that the higher you put the dipole, the lower the pattern would come down toward the horizon. But if you went above a half wavelength, the beam width would bifurcate, meaning it would split. You'd have double beams. I'll draw you a picture of this. If you go um, up a you know a dipole that's um, at uh, the optimum height of a half wave, the uh, elevation pattern is sort of like this. Okay. Now, if you this is for one half wavelength. Now, if you put it up higher, say at one wavelength, what you're going to get is this. One, two, then here's on the other side. You bifurcate the beam and you end up, uh, this is actually slightly lower than it was before, but you've got almost as much power in this node up here. Um, and you've got a very deep null right here so any signals coming from that direction the antenna will be quite deaf. Now let's go up to one and a half wavelengths which is pretty high for dipole unless you're putting up like a 10 meter or 6 meter dipole. Those are real easy to get up many wavelengths high and this is what you get. You get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is three halves wavelength. Okay, you, you, you just really start splitting up the beam. So you're sending a little here, a little there, a little there, and they've got all these deep nulls. So if you happen to be in the direction of one of these, great, but otherwise uh, you don't have the advantage that the dipole has over a lot of other antennas of being fairly omnidirectional, uh, you know, a little less to the ends, but uh, fairly omnidirectional and uh, you can pick up a signal from pretty much anywhere. Now, the question that Tony asked was, well, what about beams? Does the same thing happen with beams? And so I looked up on the ARRL and found a model um, for Easy NEC Plus, uh, 6 Plus. This is a five element, 10 meter uh, beam at 50 feet without a bell. Okay, and look what we've got. Okay. We've got this, I put this at 17 feet. 17 feet is one half wavelength, okay? And just like we expected, we have one lobe. And it's fairly wide. The three degree, three degree beam width is here. Let's see, beam width 28.1 degrees. Now, if you've got 100 watts, uh, this is down more than a, uh, 10 dB below 100 watts is 10 watts and 1520 is 1 watt. Um, so you've got a little bit of power going out the back lobe and there's a side lobe on this too. Okay, but by and large, most of your power goes out here. So if there's anything in this range, you'll hear it with the max gain of 11 uh, dB over dBi. Okay, take 2.1 off of that for the uh, gain of a dipole. I don't know why the 2.1 over real ground dipoles actually have about 7 dB gain over an isotropic antenna. 
Okay, so here you are. Now this is 17 feet, which I took because it's the half lambda. Now let's take this one right here. This is at 25 feet. Okay, so we're moving it up. And what we are seeing here is the bifurcation that we saw with the dipoles. Now in this case, the bifurcation is about minus 7 dB. So this is going to be a little bit more than 10 watts. You know, maybe 15 watts or so will be going out here. Uh, you're 15 below, you're almost 10 below here. You've got um, maybe 10 watts in this right here. And then the rest of this is your remaining going out with the 12 dBi gain. Okay, so going higher actually gives you more gain in the main lobe. But as you can see, the lobe, that's the 3 dB points here, and the beam width is 19.8 degrees, whereas here the beam width, this is the vertical beam width, is 28.1 degrees. Okay. Now let's go up to 50 feet, which is uh, what the original model was said. Okay, so this third one is at 50 feet. We got a nice tower. A common tower height is 35 feet, but in this case, 50 feet. 50 feet up, okay. Now, this is the gain right here, 13.91 dB. So you got a lot of nice gain here. But notice that this is 2 dB down from the vertical. So how much power is in this? Well, 3 dB down from 100 watts would be 50 watts. So you've got over 50 watts in this beam up here. And you've got in this one down it's six about six db down which is half and then half again okay so we take a hundred divided by half is fifty divided by half is twenty five you got twenty five watts in here here you're only twenty watt uh, twenty db down so there's about one watt in here this leaves sixty five watts for your main beam so what you're doing is you're taking your power and spreading it between the beams and you have this tremendously deep null right here where signal coming through here will be greatly uh, diminished. Okay, so what do we learn from that? If you've got 100 watts you can get all hundred out here but with the wider beam width okay remember the way Yegi's work is they focus the beam width like a flashlight would focus a beam width and make it bright in the direction it's pointing uh, this gives you something wider so you have more angles of radiation that you'll be able to hear something okay and that they'll be able to hear you as you start to go up above a half wavelength you start getting a little bifurcation in the um, beam width. This is the back lobe here. Till you get down to uh, 50 feet, where in your main lobe, even though it has a gain of 13.91, what you are multiplying that gain by is about 60, 65 watts, something like that. So you're you're losing the signal because it's going into the other elements. If you go even higher you'll get more lobes and be putting more power into them. So does height matter in antennas? Yes it does. In optimum cases it does a great deal but you're opening up this situation where the whole part of the world that happens to be coming in at this point here is you can't hear. It. It's lost. So this is why I say the optimum height for an antenna is 17, is uh, half wavelength. Now, one of the problems with um, that is that there are multiband antennas. So if this is the 10 meter portion of a bigger Yagi that you've got up, you can't quite stagger the Yagis all each at a half, 
at a half wave because then when you go to your 20 meter antenna it's going to want to be 33 feet off the ground and your 40 meter antenna wants to be 66 feet off the ground in order to keep the nice lobe pattern okay so it's kind of of academic interest because we tend to put antennas where we put antennas but it will means that the higher you go the more radiation angles that the signal comes in you won't be able to hear and no one will be able to hear you now mind you um, we talk about reciprocity and an antenna will receive in a given direction about as well as a transmit in that direction however a uh, this signal follows a path through the ionosphere from where you are let's take a look at the the ionosphere here it's kind of all weird here okay so you're going to get this is your outgoing path now when this person comes back if he comes back through here it's going to go that way um, and he could hit over here and just come down or he could hit this and come down uh, the fact is that the received signal may very well not come back on this same path that it went to the person so if you have an antenna with lots of bifurcated lobes there's a real good chance that he can hear you but you won't be able to hear him because his signal will be coming in through one of those deep nulls okay so that's why I recommend the uh, the half wavelength up here you've got everything that goes out in this whole area will come back kinda in this whole area you may have a better chance of receiving it now does that mean that uh, you've taken advantage of all the gain no but when you go with higher antennas like this one right here you are running the risk you've got a narrow three narrow transmit lobes here and fairly wide look at the 3 db point from here to here a fairly wide area of deafness okay so just something to think about so um Tony Partain uh, K7 PTC um, is exactly correct in wondering if there are uh, well wondering doesn't need to be correct but he was supposing that as you go up in height with the beam you will find uh, partitioning or bifurcation of the signal uh, when I put up um, a 70 centimeter antenna I just attached it to the um, mast out here that holds up the two meter antenna because that antenna is already many wavelengths above uh, ground just right where it is I mean you figure this 30 centimeters is a little more than an inch so 70 centimeters is oh, three inches something like that um, but when you do it at HF you've got all these things to worry about real uh, big deal DXers often have uh, several uh, Yagis on their very tall towers uh, they'll have one at the top one halfway down one a quarter of the way down and so on for exactly this reason because they can switch between antennas you know having a little waterfall for each these guys are rich um, and you can see which antenna hears the station best and if you're transmitting off the top one um, you may hear the other station best on the one in the middle of the tower so I don't say that we all should go and do that because it's quite expensive uh, but it is an interesting thing to keep in mind that antennas above real ground behave this way I would recommend that if you're putting an antenna up just for 10 meters the 17 feet is a real good height to put that antenna up because that is uh, the half uh, the half wavelength point see 10 meters 5 meters is a half you want to have 5 meters 15 feet okay so there you go 
So there you have it. My study is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd. I'm announcing my second giveaway to hams in the USA. USA because shipping costs outside the USA are, are quite expensive. The item to be given away this time is an antenna. And it's the um, My Antennas NFED Half Wave 8010 1K. It's an NFED Half Wave. It covers 80 through 10, although it only covers part of 80. And it covers the part of 80 that includes FT8, which is the most popular mode. Uh, there is a version of this antenna that covers a little portion of 75, and then where there's voice, and then on up. But uh, uh, this one happens to be the 80. Uh, I bought this with channel funds. I did a video on it. I've used it a number of times. It's an outstanding antenna. I was really impressed. Uh, I had it in the... Uh, format of an inverted V with uh, the ends seven feet off the ground in the middle 20 feet off the ground and it worked remarkably well. Um, the wire length is 130 feet so keep that in mind. Now you can take that to the end of something and drop it down or uh, mount it slightly crooked in your backyard or however you want to do it but you've got 103 feet to deal with. And you only have to feed it at the end, which is very nice. Um, and there's a video uh, on it up there. Okay, So that is uh, the giveaway. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Um, there's a link to Patreon there too. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. And don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.